like an Olympic athlete, BWH surgeon Atul Gawande constantly strives for improvement. I was trying to understand as I was going through training here at the Brigham how I actually get good at what we do. Dr. Gawande, a best-selling author and regular contributor to The New Yorker, challenged surgeons like himself to enhance their skills and improve safety. Inspired by procedures in the airline industry, he created a surgical checklist which gave birth to his third book, The Checklist Manifesto. We actually worked with um, an engineer from Boeing in a project with the World Health Organization to design a checklist for surgery that focused on having teams that have the best possible results. This checklist played a part on an episode of ER for which Dr. Gawande was consulted. Safe surgery checklist. Sheila Lane, scrub nurse. We make sure everybody in the room is introduced by name at the start of the day. The surgeon briefs the team on the goals of the operation, the how much blood to prepare, um, how long the case will take, and it's a kind of discussion, almost like a huddle. We won't be needing The average reduction in deaths was 47%. And that's from a two-minute, 19-item checklist. And the consequences have led now more than 4,000 hospitals to have adopted the approach. BWH has been a key player in the patient safety movement from the start. You have David Bates, who pioneered the work of uh, stopping physicians from doing handwritten prescriptions that were misread. That came from the Brigham and has now become a nationwide standard that has cut error rates in medications, 80%. And these safety measures are resulting in cost efficiencies, too. When we use the checklist, it prevents complications that cost, on average, $14,000. But also, moving upstream, we're now starting to study how we prevent inappropriate surgery in the first place. Dr. Gawande's innovative ideas have a huge impact here and around the globe. Lifebox is a uh, organization we started that is trying to bring safer surgery everywhere in the world. But it's also a thing. <laughs> the Lifebox is the oxygen monitor, the little pulse oximeter you put on a person's finger to measure their oxygen level. But for middle-income and low-income countries, the majority of operating rooms don't have this basic oxygen monitor. That's because these monitors can cost up to $2,000. The solution was old-fashioned business sense. We created a consortium of poor hospitals, uh, told manufacturers that we would guarantee they will buy enough monitors to give them a million dollars in business. So it cut the prices they were paying by more than 80%. Our goal is uh, to make sure no one in the world has an operation without an oxygen monitor and a checklist uh, as part of their care. Lifelong coaching is also a key to an athlete's success, and Dr. Gawande is introducing this idea to the medical world. You can be Rafael Nadal, and you will have a coach. Uh, in medicine, that's not the way we think. I brought one of our surgeons who'd been really a favorite uh, and had been a mentor of mine when I was in residency. He could bring me to another level by recognizing things that I wasn't conscious of. Dr. Gawande keeps setting higher and higher goals at Brigham and Women's and using an Olympian effort to reach them. I think our goal is to be part of driving the change in healthcare that is needed to save our country.